são trânsitos, fronteiras, migração e línguas adicionais na Amazônia. E para hoje nós temos uma roda de conversa virtual com pessoas para lá de especiais. A nossa roda de conversa é intitulada Bolsas de Intercâmbio, Compartilhando Experiências. Temos aqui três professores maravilhosos, cheios de história boa para contar, dispostos a compartilhar as experiências deles e para responder também as perguntas de vocês, que eu sei que está tá todo mundo aí com curiosidade, tem perguntas para fazer, dúvidas para tirar sobre quais os programas eles fizeram, como eles fizeram, se eles gastaram muito dinheiro, se foi de graça, como que foi esse processo. Então, é, antes de mais nada, gostaria de pedir a vocês que vocês deixassem os microfones desligados para evitar interferências durante o evento e também pedir autorização dos participantes e principalmente dos nossos convidados para que a gente grave o evento. Tudo bem por vocês, gente? Yes? Is that a yes? Ok, muito, muito bem. Então, vou... Ah, é, a Renata. A Renata que é a host. Nossa host já está gravando, para a hora. Já estou gravando, sorry. Não, tudo bem, ótimo, né? Perfeito, é isso mesmo. Ok, galera. É, eu tenho uma pergunta. Não, eu faço ela depois. Vamos conhecer os nossos convidados primeiro? Vou contar, fazer um resuminho bem breve aqui da vida de cada um para que vocês conheçam um pouco da história dessas pessoas, ok? Então, vamos lá. Começando por ordem alfabética, a professora Carla Pascoal. Quem é Carla Pascoal? Qual é a trajetória dela? Bem, ela é graduada em Letras e Inglês pela Universidade Federal de Rondônia desde 2006. Foi professora da Secretaria Estadual de Educação, SEDUC. Lecionou Língua Inglesa para turmas de ensino fundamental e médio de 2011 a 2019. Também participou de programas de intercâmbio da Embaixada Americana no Brasil, CAPES Fulbright, programas de desenvolvimento profissional para professores de inglês nos Estados Unidos, o famoso PDPI 2018, na Universidade do Missouri, e Fulbright Dai 2018-2019, na Universidade de Syracuse, nem sei se falei certo, gente, Nova York. Atuou como presidente do Brass Tissel Rondonian Chapter de 2018 a 2019 e atualmente coordena as ações voluntárias do grupo de ex-bolsistas dos programas da Embaixada Americana no Brasil em Rondônia e que tem por finalidade compartilhar o conhecimento recebido nestes programas com a comunidade do Estado de Rondônia. Professora Carla Pascoal, mais uma vez, seja muito bem-vinda e obrigada por aceitar o convite e estar aqui conosco. Eu que fico imensamente grata pelo convite de vocês também. <risos> que bom, todos felizes então. Vamos lá conhecer um pouquinho da professora Diana? Quem é Diana? Diana Kathleen, especialista em tradução de inglês e graduada em letras em inglês pela Universidade Federal do Acre em 2013. Hoje ela é professora do Instituto Federal de Rondônia foi professora da Secretaria Estadual de Educação do Acre e lecionou língua inglesa para turmas do Centro de Estudo de Línguas de 2011 a 2020. Ela também participou de programas de intercâmbio da Baixada Americana no Brasil, junto com a CAPES Fulbright, Programa de Desenvolvimento Profissional para Professores de Inglês nos Estados Unidos, PDPI, 2018, na Universidade de Portland, por seis semanas, e o ILEP, Líderes Internacional em Educação, em 2017, na Universidade do Arizona, por cinco meses. Além disso, Diana também atuou como orientadora do Education USA de 2019 a 2020. Diana, seja muito bem-vinda, grata por estar aqui com a gente. Feliz por você agora. Ah, Amo demais. Dona... <risos> Olá, <meu Deus. risos> Nossa. O Acre não está desfocado, né? <risos> Eu tô com um pé aqui e outro aí. Né? Tá sim, dividida, bichinha, né? E para completar <risos> o time de convidados especiais, nós temos aí o professor Luiz Eduardo Guedes. Esse ainda permanece no Acre. Vamos ver se a gente rouba ele para Rondônia também. Será? <risos> professor Luiz Eduardo Guedes. Ele é doutorando em Letras, Linguagem e Identidade pela Universidade Federal do Acre. 
mestre em Letras pela Universidade Federal de Rondônia, 2018, e licenciado em Letras Inglês e suas respectivas literaturas pela Universidade Federal do Acre, 2014. Possui certificação de Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages pela Northern Virginia Community College, com fomento pela CAPS, em Alexandria, Estados Unidos, e IELTS Prep, pela St. George International School, em Toronto, Canadá. Durante a graduação, foi professor bolsista do Programa Idiomas Sem Fronteiras da Universidade Federal do Acre, eu fiz parte desse time, tá? Foi também professor de escolas públicas de ensino médio e do Centro de Estudos de Línguas do Estado do Acre. Ainda foi professor e coordenador de ensino na Wizard de Idiomas Rio Branco e atualmente é docente de língua inglesa do Instituto Federal do Acre, onde também atua como coordenador do Centro de Idiomas e Intercâmbio e atuou como diretor de Relações Internacionais. Professor Luiz Eduardo Guedes, seja também muito bem-vindo a esta tarde, a este bate-papo, a esta roda de conversa virtual. Eu que agradeço o convite, tá? E vou chamar ela de tá, porque eu sempre chamei de tá, professora Tamara. E, como você viu, eu tenho um pezinho aí em Rondônia, o meu mestrado eu fiz na Uni, né? Conheço alguns dos professores Sim. do departamento, mas acabei fincando... É, minhas, minhas origens aqui mesmo, mas quem sabe, né, num, numa remoção aí, numa remoção não, numa, numa redistribuição, não vá para Rondônia, fazer parte do time lá da Diana, no Instituto Federal de Rondônia. Eu, eu, eu acho uma ótima ideia, né, vocês vão ver, a gente vai montar aqui o Dream Team aqui em Rondônia, Rondônia vai bombar, só gente <risos> maravilhosa. Então, mais uma vez, gostaria de agradecer a presença de todos vocês. E antes de eu passar a palavra aos nossos convidados, eu tenho uma pergunta e quem sabe também nossos participantes podem nos auxiliar a, a tomar essa decisão. Vocês preferem fazer esse bate-papo em português ou em inglês? Cri, cri. Cri, cri, cri. Bom, para mim, tanto faz. Inglês, inglês. Eita. O chat cresceu, hein? Inglês venceu mesmo. Ah, tem, o Pedro diz aqui que é It's up to the presenters. E aí? For me, it's okay. Uh, I, I guess everyone is interested in listening and also share ideas in English. But if you prefer o Professor Luiz, Diana, we can speak in Portuguese also. No, for me, it's fine if we speak in English. Okay, so, yeah. Since most of the participants um, said that they prefer in English, let's do it in English then. Okay, so let's do it. Diana, is that okay with you? Sure. I'm here. <laughs> Perfect then. So since everybody likes it and everybody wants it, this conversation must continue in English. So I don't know, how do you guys want to start? The stage is yours. You decide where you want to begin, how you want to do. And meanwhile, you guys participants prepare your questions and you can ask them here on the chat i will be taking care of them and also if our guests want to answer right away it's up to them if they want to okay all right good great ladies first so, ladies first <laughs> i like that idea <laughs> Yeah, Diana, we can Carla, start with Carla and then me. Carla can talk about the program she experienced. Yes, I, yes, I can. But I believe that you uh, were formal than me because you went to IVLP in 2017, right? Yes. Okay, so you are the first lady. <laughs> <laughs> we, we went by the year. So I, I have participated in three programs, but the first one I was 
uh, a student, a high school student, and uh, it's something that you can also talk if you are a teacher. You can talk to your students. I, I was in the Youth Ambassadors program in 2009. Um, I was 16 years old. It was my first experience with traveling ever. So the second one was with the ILIP. Today it is it is a they have changed something and they the name is different. Today the name is Dai and it's not with uh, the American Embassy anymore. It's with the Fulbright, but it's also five months experience. And in some university, I went to Arizona State University, and there I studied most about methodology. Uh, I didn't pay for anything in, 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 in any of these programs, and uh, the last one was, I'm just talking like an overview about them. Um, the last one was PCPI in 2018, where I went to Portland State University. Also, these two last programs, they are specifically for teachers. And uh, you are supposed to be, I forgot the name in Portuguese, uh, concursado to to be part of this um, these programs die or um, either die or PDPI um, but they are there so bright is always a good option to to go and the Fulbright website I mean and uh, browse those opportunities they have uh, there is also another one that I participated. I mean, I participated in the selection, but I couldn't go. I had I had to make a very terrible choice. <laughs> terrible, a very difficult choice. <laughs> it was the the Elf FLTA, which I was selected, but I couldn't travel. But it was another great opportunity to spend. Uh, a, uh, a year, an elective year, like um, I don't even remember the year, but it was the first program that I attempted to apply. But yeah, uh, I don't know what else we can say. I will, I'm just giving, giving an overview about everything because it's the same program that Carla has also participated and uh, yeah I just went first I think uh, what else Carla help okay okay that's fine um, my first exchange program for teachers Brazilian teachers it was PDPI in 2018 I was looking for at that at that moment at the time I was looking for an exchange program could it be paid or unpaid. I was looking. I actually I went to my uh, bank manager asking for <laughs> uh, a loan to yes to pay my exchange program. But fortunately, I was I also research on the internet. And then I found the website, the Fulbright website, the Fulbright Commission in Brazil. And then I start crazy, read everything about the Fulbright and, and its programs for, for teachers, for, um, for English teachers, but civil service in Brazil. And then I decided, okay, so now I have the opportunity to go to to go actually to an exchange program free of charge because it was the first thing I I seen. Okay, I'm not rich. My husband isn't rich, so <laughs> I have to apply for something for free. So it was really good for my uh, experience. So I decided with uh, some friends here in Porto Velho to apply for PDPI 2018. So we were selected in a regional selection, actually for, from Porto Velho. In my edition, we were nine teachers from, from public school 
four from Seduc and five from Ifru. And then we went to Missouri State, Missouri State University. Um, it was a great experience there. Actually, according to our score, because we had to, to do um, ITP, it was an ITP, a TOEFL ITP exam. And depending on our score, for example, we could apply for three different courses. Uh, uh, intermediate one, intermediate two, or methodology. Uh, according to my score and also my friends, I could apply to intermediate one. But we received a huge gift because we went to the in ELI, in English Institute at Missouri State University, and they designed a methodology course for us. So. So that's why I consider it was a huge gift because we could learn about TISO, strategies and methodology, American and history culture, and also we had academic events at the Missouri State program. Uh, and it was a six week uh, program from Fulbright Commission. It was also a convention with CAPS in Brazil. So we had only to participate in order to advance, to improve our English, skills and learning from culture because we, we've learned lots of culture uh, strategies to implement in the classrooms, public classrooms in Brazil. At the end of the last week, I, I received in my email another uh, application, another call from Fulbright Commission in Brazil to the PDPI. <laughs> and incredibly or not, because I was still in the United States with my friends, with my cousin from here, Porto Velho, and we were talking about, we were discussing, do you know, as you can see, we have another call for Fulbright. What do you think? Because now it is a five month a five-month program and all of my friends were discussing oh no i'm missing my family a lot oh no i have to come back to brazil and decide it later and at that moment i called to the manager here in porto velho deja aí from seduc and say hey i'm interested in applying again for another program and we started a long-term selection it was throughout the one year and then we went i went actually to the second program fulbright dii to um syracuse upstate in new york and then i had a different perspective about intercultural competence because i went to the university i apply as a special as a special student academic student to at the two courses at the university syracuse university and i could have a different perspective of, of what actually it is an academic environment outside our culture, outside our re reality. So I have lots of insight about the system of education as a whole, because I could learn from different perspective around the world. Fulbright DEI was an international program for educators, actually not only English teachers, but I've, I've uh, learned and I've worked with some, for example, some math teachers, biology, sociology, uh, teacher from kindergarten also. It was really amazed. So it was the, the true experience. And it was all, all experience for free. So I would, I really, really suggest for all of you who are here or for the academics who are at almost at the end of the course to try to apply for Fulbright programs especially for those <laughs> teachers who are actually at, in, uh, in the classroom at public school. Wow, lots of experience. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about mine. Um, I didn't go to PTPI, but it was a very similar program uh, by CAPES. Actually, do you remember the Science Without Borders program? So it used to, to um, happen to like, undergraduation students, right, from the, the federal universities, but then they just closed this program. But there was a like a, an amount of money that our government had already paid for the American uh, community colleges, like the, the coordinator of the, all the community colleges there. So they created this program specific for um, English professors at the federal institutes. So it was a specific for 
uh, professors at the federal institutes in order to go and study TESOL. So we didn't have the opportunity to study like the language itself, like general English, only methodology. And because of that, since I participated in this program, I applied for PDPI uh, the year after, but my, my application was denied since I had already studied methodology, even though it was not PDPI. So similar the programs were. So um, when I, I passed the, what we call contest, concurso, to, stud, to be a professor at the Federal Institute of Acre, it was in 2015. The same year I, I applied for my visa as a tourist and, and, and business, B1 and B2. And uh, so I was planning, as, as Carla said, I was planning to, to pay for going there and having an exchange program. But then this call was opened and I applied and I was selected with 74 professors from all over the country. Um, unfortunately, I was the only one from the North region, the first, because we had this program in two years, 2016, the year I went, and 2017. Uh, in 2016, only me uh, was selected as the, only I was selected as the, the, from the North region of Brazil, out of the seven states. Nobody from Rondonia, nobody from Amazonas. So it was a pity because I was, and it was really nice for me because I was on the spotlight every time because I was from the region of the Amazon and stuff like that, you know? So um, in this program, I studied TESOL, um, teaching English to speak, speakers of other languages, two weeks with intensive theoretical classes and two weeks uh, with, actually four weeks with theoretical classes yeah, and four weeks with a lot of practicum, what they call practicum. So um, I was supposed to be teaching the, the, the language center of the, universe, of the community college there. So I had like students from all over the world. It was a really nice experience. So many accents to deal with. It was really a challenge for me, but was really, really amazing. Well, this scholarship was, of course, everything was paid, was granted by the, the government. Uh, it was a really nice experience because different from the PDPI, for example, since I heard the, the, the rumors from my, my friends, uh, we stayed in a very fancy hotel with chicken, chicken is great, with kitchen and, um, you know, like everything very, very, very fancy. And then we had like a bus picking us up and taking us to school every day. And uh, the budget was really nice that uh, allowed us to travel every weekend to different states in, in, in America, in the United States. And uh, they score, somebody is asking about the proficiency test. What score do I have to get to apply for these programs? Mine, I think, was 550, something like that, to a TOEFL ITP out of 697, something like that. Yeah, so um, not difficult, but not easy, I have to, to say. Many, many professors that applied didn't not go just because they couldn't get the, the score. But it was a really nice experience because when I went there and I was studying, I made connections and that's very important when you apply for per such programs like that, especially if you are representing an institution as I was representing not only my institution, but the whole the whole region, as I said, and uh, my luck was that they were looking for new connections in the north uh, region of Brazil, northwest uh, region of Brazil, because um, like they were, they already had like relations with people from Rio, Sao Paulo, and so on, and they wanted people from just like the program we have just participating with the 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 Rio they opened this this program online because of the situation we're living now uh for alumni from these programs you know and um they opened it only for northeast and northwest regions of brazil because they are very interested in the i'm sorry 
No, it's good, right? Maybe it's your connection, Natalia. I don't know. So. Não um, pegando no meu. Tá sem som. Yeah, I think it's your connection. Try to um. Try to go out of the the meeting and come back. Maybe it's it can fix it. All right. So um, I don't know what I was saying. Um. Mosta sem som. No, it's not, baby. <laughs> You're the only one who is not. Gente, tenta sair. Tenta sair e depois voltar de novo. Somebody has to tell her writing on the chat. Otherwise, she's not. Yeah, I think you should tell her on the chat because she's probably not listening. I, I did. Oh, it's her. Yeah, the problem is with her connection, probably. Yeah. So, um, so they are very interested of those regions. So main, many of you, I think you were from Acre and from, from Rondonia. So when you participate in a program like that, make sure you have connections, make sure you talk to people. Why do I say that? Because when I went there um, in 2016, I made those connections I'm telling you about. And then when I came back, I got the position as the director of the International Affairs Office. So I started to mail them and trying to, to build up like a program for my students as well. So now every year, this uh, institution where I studied, they, they send like seven, five to seven students from my institution to study one year, like an academic year, of course, uh, in North Virginia Community College in a program called CCI, Community College Initiative Program. Um, this program. This program is for all the, the, the areas. You don't have to be like a, a English student, uh, undergraduation student, you know? And, um, but the thing is you have to be, I think in federal institutes, um, not in federal universities, students. But that's uh, something you can, you can search on the internet, CCI program. And because of these connections and my relation with the embassy as well, because I'm sending those students and I have to contact the embassy and work on their visa, student visa and so on, uh, I've just received uh, the indication from the embassy to participate in a program called IVLP, International Visitor Leadership Program. This program for 2000, uh, 2021, next year, uh, it, it, it is a very old program. It had another name before, uh, but people, famous people like Dilma and José Sarney, Sarney had participated in this program. It's for, as the, the name says, for international um, visitor leadership uh, people. So. Um, since I'm working as a leader of the international affairs in my institution, I don't know, they just um, had indicated me to participate next year. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a nice experience because as Carla said, I'm going to make connections with leaders from all over the world in education area. So I see there lots of opportunity to um, get more scholarship for my students in my institution. So I think when we participate in programs like this, and I think Diana and, and Carla share the same idea, we have to go uh, and have in mind that this is an opportunity for us, but most important, this is an opportunity for our community. Because when we come back, we have to, to share everything we learned, we have to work on things in order to get more people going, you know? And that's the, the, the feeling I have with my students who participate in programs in our institution, not only to the United States, but we send students for Portugal, to Portugal, to Peru. Now we had uh, a memorandum of understanding with a university in, in Spain. So I'm working hard for my students to have this internationalization experience that changes our life, our life completely. So um, if you have any questions, um, I don't know, we have just uh, 
given an over, overview of the programs we have participated in. So if you have any more questions, please let us know. Yeah, so here on the chat, we have actually, we had two questions actually from Jessica Paiva. Diana answered her on the chat, but maybe if you could tell us with um, more details, for example, of your experience. She asked first, uh, if you had to pay for the proficiency test as you took, did you? No, um, the ILA program or DAI now, uh, they choose an amount of uh, people and they pay for it. And uh, PDPI is the same thing. They pay, but but for for die you have to to go to a center to take the test. So, for example, me from Acre, I couldn't do it here. I had to take the test in Brasilia. So wow. I paid for the trip, for the hotel, the for the the, the the tickets and everything. But the test they paid the test itself yeah and then i was the itp test or ibt or none uh, of them the big one i don't remember the ibt the computer yes. based okay yes okay and okay so this this is what this was the one you took for die or ilip and pdpi it's the same test for both of them no, for uh, PDPI is the ITP, the short one. And what is the specific score? I mean, the least you can you you need to to pass this program, like top ITP, like four hundred, five hundred. Do do I I actually don't remember this part. I don't know if Carla remembers because. Yeah, it I depend, depending on the on your score, you can you can be selected in three different courses. So my I I already went to methodology, so I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't go to the proficiency I think, English. I think yeah. the most you have to have is four hundred fifty, right, Carla? Yes, I I think the first thing it is important to say it is also it is delivered for teachers uh, in public education. So you have to be working currently in the classroom at a public school. So we have to have your stage probatory completed. <laughs> I forgot the name how to say it. Uh, so you have to complete the three years of your stage probatory and and I have at least five years of experience teach English. It depends on if it is public or private school situation. But about the score, uh, as I remember, for the intermediate one, you will have a score of a 500, 450. Yeah. And the second uh, course, intermediate two, you have uh, to have at least 500 to 550 and for the the top course the methodology you have to have at least 600 points at a paper based version of the TOEFL exam ITP so it is only reading uh, English structure and a writing session you don't have for example a speaking session but you have a listening session so you have to prepare for reading listening and writing in a controlled instruction yeah Carla, um we have reading we have listening and we have a structure which is not writing but you have to complete uh, it is english use of english grammar yeah. basically yeah so I don't have to write anything like a uh and it is the paper based, for example, for Fulbright DAI, the 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 
five five a month program you have to apply for an itp a computer based but nowadays we have since i've learned from the webinar from ets currently we have the home edition of the test right now so you can apply you can look for a uh, you can apply, you can make your application, and you can do it at home if you have a computer, if you have all the devices are, that are needed to do it at home. And but at that time, I also went to Brasilia for the second program, uh, but I was working to Seduc at the time, and they paid for me the travel, the trip for, to Brasilia, from Porto Velho to Brasilia, they paid for the ticket, the air flight ticket. They paid for the hotel, the mail, for everything. I didn't pay <laughs> a coin <laughs> for that. <That's> good. <laughs> so guys, it's important to say those tests, they, they value for, they expire like in two years. So it's always good to have a test in your drawer, you know? So if you have a call, you already have the test. You don't have to make those travels, you know? You just apply. That's it. So now that because of the, the, the pandemic situation we are living in, uh, you can apply to do the test as Carla said at home. So it will cost a lot, lot less. Yeah. Actually, it is the same cost. It, it is $250. Mm, you don't have to pay for the trip. Yeah, so that's why exactly. Yeah. Or your institution they don't have to pay for it <laughs> yeah and you are very lucky actually carla because um on the call i mean the edge you don't have to you don't have the 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 the, 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 the how, how can i say that you don't have the the certain that your institution will pay for the trip since diana has to travel since i had to travel for my my visa and I had to pay everything. So um, I don't know. I'm just saying it's not on the call. So it was lucky that Carla had this opportunity with her institution, but not on. But I believe because of the, those situation, they have been proven. You know, because uh, Seduke had to sign a term and condition. So they were actually obliged to pay for. Okay, if if you have if you have a, a feature selected, so you have to pay for every expenses for them. You know, they have to inform. They have to report at least four teachers from the uh, government education. So they have to uh, report for selected teacher to the national phase in Brasilia, and then Brasilia uh, choose at least 30, 30 participants. They, re they receive a vouch from the U.S. Embassy, so the U.S. Embassy helped to pay to the ETS uh, exam. Mm -hmm. And your institution, in that case, Seduc, had to pay all the expenses. So if you were selected, so like imagine it's a big funeral, <laughs> you know, only four for each state. Uh, in my edition, it was actually 17 states had applied at the time. And only me from Rondonia in 2019 were selected. So I went to Brazil, I did the test. It, and in, two, in the 2019 edition, the score were basically 74, 74 is score. It was the minimum, you know, in a, in a test where you have a high score is 120. So you have only, I had only to took a 74. Nowadays, I've heard that the, the minimum score was 61 score is basically low for the institution because you are you are expected to um to go to academic environment and when i went there at syracuse university i discovered that for example if you are in stu a student interested to apply to actually participate in academic graduate or undergraduate course you have to have for at a minimum score at a hundred so imagine you have a minimum score to apply to the to this kind of programs but you also have to 
be working in uh, again in a public institution you have to write an essay talking about yourself the kind of work you've been doing uh, how many classes you were taking uh, what kind of projects you are developing at your community um, so I, I could talk about my project that I was developing at the time at the school so so they they are looking for uh, people's educators who are aligned to their objectives. So I think this is the second important thing we, ha we have to mention here, because first of all, if you are looking for an exchange program, you have to uh, see if their objectives are aligned with your goals. Okay, okay, I'm the person for this program. So I have something important. I deserve this award, I deserve this grant because of this and that. So you have to write, uh, you have to write a lot, uh, letters of intentions, you have to talk about yourself, you have to put your face in the world and say, okay, I'm here, I deserve it. <laughs> you know, so you have to, to pay for it. In this case, not financially, but you have to work a little bit. <laughs> a lot. I yes, I also, like, I, like I, also, I also to my students, you know, they always, oh, teacher, how can I do to, to go in exchange program like yours? Okay, you have to apply, first of all. <laughs> yes, Great. that's what I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. uh, DAI, the Fulbright program, DAI, it's a... Uh, like Carla is saying, it has a lot of steps. It's a very long selection, but it's not impossible. It's uh, it's a lot of hard work, and uh, please don't give up just because you're listening <laughs> to this and think it's difficult. But it is possible. You just have to commit and uh, take your time to uh, to perform the all this the time that you have to to take to apply for it and uh, tests the interviews the 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 application itself which is which is a little bit long but before that if you're thinking about applying for um any fulbright program be involved in your community in your school community I mean, uh, with things you like, with projects you like, um, because that's their culture, that's what they like. They like uh, projects and things like that. So usually the Fulbright programs, they will ask you for some kind of information about the programs, about the projects and everything that you are involved in your school community or living community itself um but yeah just don't uh don't think it's impossible it is possible P uh the fulbright die it's a worldwide uh program it's not only for brazil so yes it is a little bit difficult when i traveled it was only uh seven teachers from brazil but it was 64 teachers around the world so the numbers are not high but in my state for example only i uh tried no one else tried to apply so i tried and i got it and diana and i think that another important thing to mention to this odd audience it is because it is especially designed this this kind of programs for uh pre-service teachers uh yeah. these are all uh, one of the arguments in our teacher english teacher community in the whatsapp because they all say oh i don't believe because it, one of the requires is okay you have to graduate before 2015 so i graduate in 2006 <laughs> you know and even more year after year they are um high in the the year of the certificate of the graduation of the teacher so they are looking for pre-service teachers so if you are at the end of the your academic uh work at the at the end of your college so 
that's the perfect time to you to apply to F F L T A program. Teach Portuguese in a university in the United States. It's a nine to ten months, I think, or for a Fulbright DAI program also, or for a PDP. Actually, a PDPI is if you already have a stage probatorio conclude, but it is important for for you that we we uh, you are listening to us right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. sending the link for the FLTA uh, program, which is open right now, the call. So you have up to July 27th, I guess. Okay. <laughs> no, five days. days from no, no, no. That's, the, that's the, the, the date of this score. No, sorry. It's, this score. Well, I'll have to read the call. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. So, uh, if you go to this website I'm sending you, and you go to to uh, Bolsas para Brasileiros nos Estados Unidos, you'll see all the the programs that are open right now. The calls. Somebody here, uh, Luis, is comment in the comments somebody Pedro de Souza say info. Uh, you have to be clear, informing what benefits it will bring to you and to your community as well so i think i could i could i could add some comments about it about these about the benefit because you are the first uh, beneficiary of the, the program and after that your your community your students your institution so but it brings to you for example, a knowledge about language and culture. So sometimes we are, sometimes all the time actually, we are here in Brazil, we are learning English and we are learning how to teach English. And you also have to be aware about the, the culture actually. So uh, having this kind of experience could increase your culture competence as a teacher. So in my opinion, it's really important. So you, you have, to be aware of how is the education uh, is working outside Brazil, so we, we have we have the dif we have different perspective about the same issue. So when we are talking about education, so I had the opportunity to apply for uh, education international education for transformation course at Syracuse University, and there uh, I met different students from Korea, from Senegal, from Israel, from Morocco, from Indonesia, from Philippines. And at that class, we, we went to seminars and discussions about the, the, the context of our educational system. So I had the opportunity, for example, to present about the Brazil uh, the, uh, educational contest to the people so they could ask me okay how how things work in brazil uh talk about the, the culture i also went to um uh, a field experience at a high school in syracuse district i had a 90 hour of observation at field experience and then i could actually co-teach uh, with the Spanish teacher because there they have a foreign language teacher at the high school, but they call the world language classes. So I, I had the opportunity to observe how they teach Spanish as a world language uh, classroom. So it was it was an impressive experience because we could I could observe, I could compare, I could have a different perspective because here in Brazil we've learned about. Um, some authors, Brazilian authors, but you can also learn about uh, different culture authors about the same topic. So you can have a different perspective about the same issues. So these are one of the benefits you could earn from this kind of cultural and educational exchange program. Right. So I, we have some questions here. Can I ask them first before you come? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Maria Teresa is asking this. Is it still possible to participate from, from Fulbright program if you are from Federal Institute? Because it seems that in the last program, it was not possible anymore. Do you guys know anything about that? Which, which program? DAI. 
the AI, I don't uh, think. She, she, mentioned, she mentioned Fulbright. She didn't yeah, because we have, we have, yeah, we have FLTA, we have um, PDPI, we have DAI. So DAI, I think it's for for state departments of of uh, education, right? So yeah, DAI, we cannot participate as professors Not from the Federal Institute. But PDPI yeah. and FLTA, uh, we can. So it depends on the program. You have to to read the lines on the call in order to to get this information. And it is also because nowadays, uh, Fulbright Commission in Brazil, they are focused to deliver the uh, university university college to the federal institute, like Ifru. So they have the like Luis went university college programs for the international internationalization. <laughs> now I forgot yeah. it for the institution, <laughs> federal institutions. That's so, it. Mm -hmm. So the, the AI has a specific audience in this case. I um, see. So um, Felipe, he has one more question. Uh, did you have any problems with the permission of the country to be there? Did you have any issues with your visa? I guess that's the question. Oh, uh, of the country to be there. Um, no. It is a different kind of visa. It is a different kind of process to get it, but it it is not. I I think most of us who participate in this program don't have this kind of um, problems because it is a, a closed program and everything. But it is the it's a different kind of visa. So it's the J one. It's a special one. Yeah, so and this problem. this visa, this visa is only valid uh, like a month before you travel, and a month after your studies finishes, finish. So um, it's not a kind of visa that you like the the tourist one that you can go there and come back anytime you want in ten years. It's just for their a specific uh, time uh, when your study studies happen. You know, so that that's why I think it's not difficult to get those kind of visa because, as Jenna said, the embassy already know that you are being granted. So problem will not be a, uh, money will not be a problem, and um, you have all the the assistance from also the 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 your institution back in Brazil, but also the the institution there because you have to have the letter of acceptance and everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not a problem to get the visa. Yeah. And we also could travel among the United States, for example, during the spring break. It is a, it is a, a, a week holiday for all the students, so we could uh, travel. Uh, for example, uh, in my sp in spring break in 2019, I went to Orlando, Florida <laughs> with my yeah. friendship family. We spent uh, five five days there, just enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but all the all the other Fulbrights they went to different states. For some of them, went to Arizona because the Brazil, for the Fulbright DAI, I went. We went in four: me from Rondônia, Fortaleza, Brasilia, and Mato Grosso. So I was the the only Brazilian who went to the New York, and the others went to Arizona University. So they went to. Puerto Rico, <laughs> so they could because Puerto Rico is, is it belongs to the United States. So we could travel in the in the United States. The closest to the border we I went was we went to the Nicaragua Falls, Nicaragua yes, Nicaragua Falls. So we just yeah. could, okay the, the the other side is Canada, but you can't go there because your visa is just one entry. So <laughs> stay in the United States side. <laughs> So you you not have problem. So you just could uh, a sightseeing at the Canada, but we can go there. We couldn't go there. Gianna, did you also uh, traveled in the USA during your period of? Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Tell the truth, nothing but the truth. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say I. I one day of class because I really wanted to go to to Orlando as well. Uh, so it was not like we didn't have 
enough time because when it was the 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 oh my god the fall winter let's go summer spring, winter. Spring. Oh my god. <laughs> when it was winter break we had this snowstorm and we couldn't get out of the hotel and no travel of course so uh, but during the weekends, I went to Orlando, Miami, um, New York, uh, Philadelphia, and, and San Francisco. Yeah. So those were the travels I did. What about it is a lot of work. It is a lot of uh, study. You have to study hard. But it is also good. I mean, it is great if you have the opportunity to to travel around and uh, know some other parts, because then you have the experience, and then you have the the. I don't know even how to say it. You are sure when you talk about that kind that that a specific place. If you're talking, for example, about New York. Akala has been to New York, so she can talk with property about New York, about the places, uh, about everything that she has really uh, met while there. So it is an, an experience, an opportunity that we as teachers, we need to try, at least try for this, to apply for these programs because it is a must for us. Uh, it gives us more uh, encouragement, it gives us more happiness to work, and uh, we know that it's not something that, okay, if you are an English teacher, you have to travel to USA, for example. No, but at the same time, it is something that it's nice, right? It is something that you have at least to try. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot of fun as well. Okay, so uh, there is still some doubt. Some people uh, said that uh, teachers and professors from the federal institutes cannot apply for PDPI anymore. Eddie is saying that they can. Uh, can we come to a consensus about that? All right, because let's see. Joyce, Joyce said that according to the last call, she believes it not allowed anymore. Uh, in fact, it was not allowed summer 2019. And when Fulbright launched the edge tower for this year, it was not possible for federal institution teachers to take part. But there are people working on, and I think Louise and you guys that are from federal institutions, could or should write uh, Fulbright emails and ask them and plead for the teachers in those institutions to take part of those uh, programs again, because that makes no sense. You guys could participate, and since last year, you guys are not allowed anymore. Actually, Pedro, uh, I had I had one friend from the Federal Institute of Acre, uh, and she went to PDPI last year, summer. So even though the, the call says, because I'm, I'm just checking the call, and it says, uh, she applied and she got it. So that's why I really thought that professor from the Federal Institute still could go because she went last year, you know, even though the call said otherwise. But um, I don't know. Now I really don't know because uh, written is something and happening is something else. So. But, but, uh, but people don't stay stuck because of these issues because at Fulbright Commission, there are a lot of calls for example, for master's program, for doctor's PhD program. 
so if you are uh, intended to apply for a master at uni <laughs> so you have to you have to be in an institution in order to apply for a um, master okay. yeah yes like uh, uh what's the name sandwich yes yes so you have a chance you have lots of opportunities so you need to be prepared okay every year we have the calls be prepared for that yeah and um now it's there is a a doctoral program opened sandwich program opened right now yeah yeah oh. uh, it, well it it has been great i'm not sure if we addressed all of the questions that our participants asked but before we go i have one last question for you guys. Maybe you already said that, but I would like to ask you again. Is there any program that you are looking forward to right now? Like, I'm waiting for this next call because I'm going to apply for it. For sure. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, I am dating <laughs> this. <Great>. this, this. <laughs> <laughs> the sandwich program, the uh, uh, doctoral sandwich program. I don't know even how to mix those words with Portuguese inside, but anyway. And also, I am I'm hoping to get this indication uh, ready for next year uh, with the international visitor or something program that I've talked to you about, and I just don't remember the name because um, the embassy had indicated me but the 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 government in america they have to accept me and i'm waiting for this ex acceptance so i'm looking forward to participating in those two programs the doctorado sandwich program and this for international leadership and things yeah great diana you blogger, yeah. Instagram, digital influencer. <laughs> Actually, I um, I don't have any program that I'm looking forward now because I can't PDPI anymore. I can't apply for it. So basically, those that are there, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> Oh, so I for see. now, I don't, I don't have you have exhausted your resources. Yeah. Yeah, but but sooner enough, she will be studying her masters, and she'll be participating in a master's program. Yeah. Program. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My focus now is is a little bit different. I have to take my masters. Great. Carla, are you still there? I see you. Yeah, I'm head. here. I'm here. <laughs> can you see me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. I, I can apply to PDPI oh, too. Um, I, I, I'm not allowed to leave Brazil for two years <laughs> because of the DAI program. <laughs> but I only, for, only for, tourist, for tourism. So before, uh, after the pandemic, I hope I could go to to Orlando again. Uh, I I sw swore to my son actually. Okay, Luis, <laughs> what happened with your mother? Because I, I swore to you, I I would go with you and and leave you with me to to Orlando again. I have I left my friendship family at the New York. I love them. I miss them so much. So, uh, um. I swore to them, okay, I'll be back after these two years or after this terrible moment we've been through it. But I'm dating also after I take a master. <laughs> uh, I'm a master also, a master or a, a PhD program at Fulbright Commission. So it's for from, from three years now, four years now. But I have I have to I have to be prepared also. So I'm working on it. I'm focused on my um, thesis. So 
that's it. So I, I'm 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 leaving right now because we have to live today, okay? But we always have a vision, you know, in the future. Okay, I I'm not I didn't die, so I have a purpose in this world. So we have to work on it, okay? <laughs> so yes, I'm dating. Awesome, great. Guys, please don't go yet. I need to send you the feedback form so you guys can evaluate this conversation here today. And also, it is the way that we are checking for your presence here, okay? So, uh, where is Renata? Renata is supposed to help me. She's not here, but okay, in a sec, I'll send you. Oh, only a minute. Yes, I'll, I'll send you guys. Here it is. So here in this link, you can put there your name, your full name, the way you want to receive in your certificate, your email, so we can send it to you. And also evaluate this talk today and give us more suggestions so it can help us to prepare more encounters like this for you. All right. Other than that, I would like to thank you all once again, our guests, and you guys participants mm -hmm. i really appreciate your presence here i think this conversation was really enlightening you brought many information to the table it is uh it is more valuable maybe than other people because you're showing things you did the things you lived and this is the ex experience you showed this is what we we take from here and this is what helps other people to see that it is not so difficult as it's as it looks because sometimes we we start reading these uh these calls and it all looks so complicated you have to write letters you have to take tests and you don't even finish to read it you want to give up and by hearing you here today maybe it gave more motivation to people here to focus and thinking about these programs and also focusing on their English, right? To improve their English so they can take those tests and improve them, improve their teaching and take all the opportunities that are out there. So thank you again. Thank you very, very much. Anytime. Anytime you need us. Okay, count on me. <laughs> Drink me and right, go. <laughs> yeah, let's do this again next week, okay? Let's week let have another one. <laughs> okay. Anything Bye. Any questions? Okay, so I guess this is it. We finish here today. Thank you again. Maybe you would like to pose for a photo to come so that Gianna can post on her Instagram, our digital influence right here. And she's <laughs> also a digital influencer here. Renata is is too. So maybe this is the time if you wanna guys open your cameras. This is time to show up and make that give give that big smile. No bother. I'm ready. That's it. Okay, so here we go. Renata. Renata, where are you? Renata. <laughs> yes, here. Everybody, everybody left. Oh, nobody wants to show their faces. It's okay. Maybe next time. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Davi, my camera. Mm. But you have Let's a do... picture, right? Okay, yeah. You show. Okay. Let's great. do this with us. Yes, I'm here also. Yes. So I'll take my prints over here. You take your screenshots over there, and then we share those screenshots and see who had the most beautiful shot. I have amazing shots from Jana's face right here. I'm <laughs> to, to share with you. I'm afraid to see those. Oh my God. Please tag me. Yeah. In screen top. Tag me. <laughs> yeah, show me that big smile. Yeah, great. Awesome. Amazing. I think that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.